I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Do you have a stack of orphan blocks? They might be from a quilt along or a guild challenge or a community project. This is part two in my series on what to do with a pile of blocks. And today's episode is about sampler blocks. How to combine blocks that are all the same size but very different patterns into a cohesive quilt. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. If you've been quilting for a while, chances are you've got a pile of orphan blocks somewhere in your stash. It might be a pile of five, it might be a pile of 50, or it might be a pile of 500. Just waiting for inspiration to put them all together. There are many different strategies you can use to put blocks together based on what you have. If you remember my first block assembly video, to know what method to use, you need to lay out your blocks. Give them a good look and then ask yourself these five questions. How many blocks do you have? Are they all the same size? Is there a common theme holding everything together? Is there a common fabric? Is there a common color? And rank them on how important they are to you because every block pile has its own story. And then just wait a bit. Give them some time to swim around your head and spark some ideas. Sometimes inspiration comes quickly, but I find it usually takes one good night's sleep. If you've been following my social media since 2018, you may remember that I participated in Gnome Angel's 100 Days 100 Blocks Challenge. Tula Peak's City Sampler pattern was used for that year's challenge. And then last year, I did the 100 Days 100 Blocks Challenge again, this time with her Kinship Fusion pattern. And before I jump on board with this year's challenge, I think it's a good idea to finish off the old ones first. Now I know I have 100 blocks and every block is going to be six inches finished and they are very modern sampler blocks and they are very different from each other. Plus I had made the decision to use only fabric from my Mount Scrapmore. So there is a very eclectic mix with no common color, theme or fabric pulling it all together. I have tints, I have shades, I have pure hues in all colors of the rainbow plus black and white in all sorts of values too. If you're unfamiliar with these terms, check out my color theory series. And you can see with them all laid out, somebody might look at this and call it one hot mess. So for me, finding some cohesion to make them all work together is the priority. And for this project, I feel the best way to incorporate all these blocks together is to use sashing. What is sashing? Sashing is simply strips of fabric that you sew in between blocks. Sashing is great to combine a variety of blocks so that you don't need to worry about nesting seams and lining things up. It also frames your block, stabilizing the whole layout with a common shape and unifying the color. There are many types of sashing, simple, cornerstones. The cornerstones can be pieced or fussy cut and the strips in between can be more complicated. But let's not go there. My blocks are already busy and I don't want to add any more pattern to make it busier. In a simple grid, you have short strips that are sewn to the side of each block and then long strips that are sewn in between rows. And there are no rules that these need to be the same width and there's also no rules that you need to have the same amount of blocks in each row. They can be staggered or aligned. So it doesn't matter if you're short a few blocks or you don't wanna use all the ones that you have. You can also put your blocks on point, which is when you turn your blocks 45 degrees. It can often add energy to a flat design. And I did this with my farmer's wife quilt. But I tried these blocks on point and it really didn't add anything to the design. So I'm keeping them on the horizontal.
the laying out of a hundred blocks can be overwhelming. I try to manage my yellows by scattering them throughout the quilt. Once all the blocks are laid out, I take a black and white photo and I find how my values are. I fiddle with the layout, moving my darker values to the top and the bottom and having my high value blocks through the center. You can fiddle forever with this step and I find I need to set a time limit. And when the timer goes off, I call it done. I have decided on a staggered layout. That is each row is going to shift over two inches from the one above it. I did it because I liked the movement that it brought to the pattern. The bonus will be is that none of my vertical sashing will need to align with the row beneath it. My design wall really helped me with my blocks. I was able to lay them all out, get them oriented in the right direction and sort them. If you're interested in making one of your own, I'll leave a link to that video below. So let's talk about the color of the sashing. When something is so mixed up like this, it's often best to use a desaturated color. That is a color all the way over on this side of the color wedge so it's not competing with colors in the quilt. But which one to go with? So I'm gonna take some of them for a test drive. I tried a dark gray, I tried a light gray, I tried a dark brown, I tried a light brown, I tried a natural and a couple of others. And I really feel that this light gray might be the best choice. It's not my normal choice, but I have an idea of who this quilt is going to go to and a light gray will work for them. There are also no rules about the number of colors in your sashing, but I think for my melting pot of fabrics here, I'm just going to stick to one. There are three issues to consider when deciding upon the size of your sashing. First, sashing can be any size, but your eye prefers it when it's proportional to the block beside it. So for my six inch blocks, I could make my sashing three inches, two inches, 1.5 or one. Second, the larger the sashing, the more it draws attention away from your blocks. When it's narrower, your sashing has less impact. So test drive them by folding your fabric at the different thicknesses, or just lay your blocks out at the different widths to find which one that you like best. And thirdly, what size is going to give you the quilt coverage that you need? I have a hundred blocks and I would prefer narrow sashing. So I sat down and did the math with nine blocks in 11 rows with a one inch sashing will result in a quilt 78 inches by 64. I'm aiming for a full or double size quilt. So I'll add a small border to the top and the bottom to finish it. Sashing that finishes at one inch is what I need. So that means I need to cut strips at one and a half inches. I will also need long one and a half inch strips for my sashing rows. Before I show you how I put it all together, let me tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a year of learning, growth, and connection. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning new skills. You can find classes that match your goals and interests, like photography, illustration, graphic design, and more. You know that I've enjoyed Skillshare classes for several years, taking all sorts of classes on film production, calligraphy, and design. They are a great way to unwind and relax while doing your 30 minute sewing, making dinner, or doing the laundry. All classes are ad free so that you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description or use my code, Just Get It Done Quilts, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So the challenge when we piece sashing is to keep it all square. Let's tackle the rows first. We sew sashing to the side of the block. Then we sew the blocks together. The challenge is to keep them aligned. If we sew them off by just an eighth of an inch with each block, we can be out over an inch or two by the end of the row. 
and your quilt will not be square. Before I start, I make sure that my block is square and I choose to sew my block to the sashing and not my sashing to the block. Let me explain. I know my sashing is exactly the right size, but my blocks with all their piecing are sometimes not perfect. If they're too big, I can trim them down, but when they're too small, I need to account for that. I'm checking 100 blocks, so I am going to make a template for six inch square. This way I can mark my midpoints in my snow line when my blocks are small and I align that center mark to the center point on the sashing. And if I need to adjust my block to get that quarter of an inch seam, I can see how much. I always use a leader and I lift my pressure foot slightly before I start to be sure that my pieces haven't shifted. Sewing straight is harder than you think. So check out my video for some tips and tricks. I press using a really good ironing technique to keep the block and the sashing square. And I have a full video on that technique as well. And repeat. With rows, it's a different issue. Long strips of fabric can stretch, resulting in puckers and waves. So I want to mark my sashing before I sew. My sashing is one inch finished and my blocks are six inch finished. So I want to mark my sashing at six inches and seven inches and repeat. And if you don't have a short ruler to do this, just make yourself a template. Then I ensure that each of these marks are lined up with a seam. And this is one place that I like to use pins. Do you think we can get Mando out of the way for the final quilt reveal? Sometimes it takes years before you put all your blocks together and they can take a beating with fraying and creasing and your skills have also improved in that time and it can be hard looking at all those less than perfect results. And your taste could have changed. With what I know now about myself and my personal color zone, I would never make a similar quilt today. But you know what? It's gonna be okay. If you are thinking of making a sampler quilt or joining this year's 100 Days 100 Block Sew Along, I have a couple of videos on how to get ready and I'll leave a link to that playlist right here. Take care and I'll see you next time.